All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. Hello, y'all. Welcome to another collaboration video with me, Juju Bay, and Real Talk Session Series. Here to bring you Don't Funk Up Spiritual Baths 101. So you're probably wondering, Juju, what is a spiritual bath? So a spiritual bath is a bath that you can either sit in in a tub or that you dump over your body. And it's used to cleanse, it can be used to protect, but really to wash away any type of energies or things, lingering essences of people, whatever that you just wanna get off your body. You can also take spiritual baths to bring in opportunities, to bring in luck. It kind of just depends on what you put in your bath. So today we're gonna make a general cleansing bath, one that kind of purifies the spirit, will get away any icky stuff that you don't want anymore. Um, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna show y'all an easy way to do that. So first thing I have is just a regular bowl of water. This is tap water. I was originally taught that you should use some type of purified water. So you can do that if you have it, but ain't no wrong with tap. So this is just tap water. So here I have the herbs we're gonna use for our bath. I chose oregano, marjoram, and mint. I chose these because this is just what my spirit <laughs> wanted to, to use. I'm actually going to take this bath. Um, so I'm going to open up all the herbs here. Oh, and we're also going to use honey, just a little bit of honey to bring sweetness and Florida water just for extra. Um, and I like the smell of Florida water too for a bath. So I'm going to go with oregano first. Just going to pick up some as much as I think is necessary. And I'm going to take it over the water and just remove the, the leaves. Some folks put the whole stems in, that's fine. I'm, I'm just not going to do that today. I'm gonna just remove the leaves from the stem and then just throw the stems down. So again, oregano is really good for protection. So we're getting some protection energy going on in the bath, protecting us from nasty spirits, people, just anything that we wouldn't want in our sphere, in our space. Um, and on our spirits. So I'm gonna put oregano in here. Also oregano is good for keeping the law away. I think I've mentioned that in one of the older videos. So I don't know, maybe if you got some problems with the law, you need to keep the police, child. No judgment, but you can use oregano in your baths to amplify that energy of keeping people you don't need around you away, particularly the law. So now that our oregano is in the bath, I like to just take my hands in it and just kind of tear it apart some more. See, I'm like just grabbing some of the herbs. And I didn't need a lot of oregano. And while you're making your bath and while you have your hands in the water, of course you're gonna wanna be praying. So what are your intentions for the bath? Right, okay, my spirit's like, girl, put the rest of that oregano. We're gonna use all the oregano. Um, so we're praying that any people that we don't need around us aren't close by, that we're safe, that we're protected from the law, that we're protected from anyone or anything that needs to stay away from us. So I'm saying our prayers. I have that intention. I'm holding that intention while I'm making this bath. And then I'm gonna move on to the next herb. So next we're gonna use marjoram. I like to use marjoram to also protect, but it's almost protection in a different way. I think of marjoram as like protecting my heart, um, protecting my spirit and also healing. So like healing from grief, healing from sadness, so if there's any particular like sadness that maybe you're going through that you just want to protect yourself from any further um, sadness, disappointments, grief, etc., I like to use marjoram for that. So we got some protection, some healing, moving through sorrow. That's what I'll use the marjoram for. I'm do a little bit. Let's do this chunk right here. 
And again, I'm just removing the leaves from the stem, not putting the whole stem in there. But if some of the stem falls in, that's fine. And there you go. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm saying my prayers around protection, around peace, around healing from grief, healing from traumas. I'm putting all that intention into this bath and to just cleanse myself and my spirit of any malice or ill intention. And I'm not sure if you can tell yet, but the water is slowly turning colors. It's turning a green. So the water is turning like a, a brownish green. That's good. We want our water to not be clear. It should not be clear. Okay. Now our last herb we're gonna use today is mint. Mint is one of my favorite herbs to use in a spiritual bath. Um, one, because it always makes the smell just pop, but also it just, mint is good for so many different things. It's when we think about mint, we use mint to refresh our breaths. <laughs> we use mint to clean. And so that's kind of the same energy that this, this plant carries it's refreshing our spirits it's cleansing our spirits it's removing any spiritual toxins more or less from our bodies um, but also like I said before mint just smells so good it always just makes the bath smell perfect so yeah let's just use all the mint okay so we got all our mint in there, we got our marjoram and oregano, and now we just go to town. Really getting my hands in there, praying for my protection, praying that the things that I don't need on my spirit are washed away. I could be carrying some energies of people that I've been around that I don't need to be carrying. So I just wanna wash all of that off, just purifying my spirit, setting some good intentions. Praying for my protection. You can also sing into your baths. Uh, typically, I'm not gonna sing for y'all today, but typically I would be singing into the water. Um, I find that the herbs resonate very well to, to sound, even if you can't sing, it's okay. And the spirits that are helping you make this bath. So just sing a, a song that you think is relevant, a song that maybe you like, or that just makes sense to sing into the waters. Just wanted to give a little browner once I see it starts changing colors that's when it's beginning to work and again you put whatever herbs that you feel called to put into your bath one thing that I like to say is you know maybe if you don't know what to use go to the grocery store and go to the herb section or go to a herbal store and just pick out some herbs you don't have to know what they mean just intuitively pick three or five or nine however many you feel and then go home and do your research do some googles and see what the herbs mean see if they're relevant to a situation that you may need to take a bath for um, maybe you need to bring in some more money for yourself bring in a lover wash some things off right so see what the herbs mean and then use those for your bath okay you can also use dry herbs um, and you would basically boil them as if you're making tea. Um, I just prefer to use fresh herbs. So here you see the water has completely changed colors. It's beautifully murky, which which means we we have done we have done well. Now I'm going to add a little bit of honey, not too much because I don't need honey all in my bathtub, but just a little bit and just calling in sweetness in my life, sweet things, people, experiences, and blessings. So, mm, boom, a little honey, just gonna stir that up a little bit and then keep praying for that sweetness, for that protection, for that healing. And then a splash of Florida water. Florida water is uh, traditionally used as a cleanser. Um, I like to use it because it just gives it a good smell. And if you have the bath around for a while, it's nice to have some alcohol in it so that it stays fresh. So not too much, just for the vibe. 
and we're done. That's a very simple spiritual bath. Um, again, spiritual baths are really, really important in hoodoo. They're very important in a lot of spiritual practices because water is holy in itself. So cleaning yourself, washing yourself is so important because even if we're trying to call in all these wonderful things into our lives, if we funky or we have a whole bunch of like crap on us, we can't really retain our blessings. We can't really retain what we're calling in. So we always want to make sure that we're clean so that we have a fresh slate. So all of the good manifestation work or whatever we're doing, we're bringing it in and calling it in and it stays. It's not being masked by all the funk that we have on us. So don't funk up, take your spiritual baths. You can take them once a week, every day, twice a week, three times a week, whatever you feel you need to do. Some people need to take them more than others. Um, so figure that out on your own, get divine on it if you can, or ask someone what you think, but trust your intuition. And that's pretty much it. So we have prepared our bath and now taking it, I would go take a shower or take a bath as usual, physically clean myself. And then after I would take a bowl of this mixture here, I would actually put it in a different bowl because it's going to have to last me for about three days, which is, this is more than enough for three days. Um, so I would get an additional bowl, pour some of this mixture into that bowl. I would dilute it a little bit with just some water from the bath. And after I'm done physically cleaning myself, I would take this and just dump it. I would dump it over my body. Sometimes I dump it over my head if it calls for that or if I feel like I need to do that. Um, but that's pretty much, that's it. To preserve your spiritual bath, you will want to keep it in the refrigerator. These are live herbs, so they can spoil just like anything else. So if you're not taking all of your bath in one day, keep it in the refrigerator so that it doesn't go bad. Um, this bath will probably last me three days. I'm thinking I'm gonna do a three day bath. So I'll keep the remaining bath that I don't use in the fridge until I'm ready for it the next day. You can also make a whole bunch of spiritual bath and put it in a container, an old juice bottle, an old lemonade bottle and freeze it. So when you're ready to take another bath, you have it in the freezer, you take it out, you let it dethaw, and then you've got a bath for the future. You can absolutely make spiritual baths for other people. If you feel so called to, maybe you feel like someone in your family or a friend could benefit from your spiritual work. So yeah, you can make baths for other people. I would check in to make sure you're using the right herbs and that it goes along with what they're able to have on their bodies, etc. But yeah, you can definitely make baths for others as well as yourself. But make sure that you're not funky first <laughs> before you're dealing with other people. So I didn't say earlier, but some folks will drain out the herbs, the physical herbs from the bath and just have the water and use that in the tub. Some people like me more recently, I've been keeping my herbs in, which means that I have herbs all up and through my tub when I'm done. Um, just make sure that you, you clean that out each time once you finish your bath. Um, you can do either. I don't think it matters. You can strain if you want to, keep the herbs in if you want to. Thank you all so much for tuning in to Spiritual Baths 101, Don't Funk Up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this YouTube video as well as comment and let us know what you think. Follow me on Instagram at It's Juju Bay and also follow Real Talk Session Series on IG. Listen to our podcast. We have the Miseducation of the People as well as a Little Juju podcast and you can find both wherever podcasts are streamed. And do not forget to go to the Real Talk Session Series merch store. All the proceeds from the merch go to fund educational videos such as these. Uh, thank y'all for watching. I'll see you later next time. And remember, all you need is a little juju. Don't funk up. Later.